Isaiah 53, the Bible says, Who hath believed our report? And to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant, as a root out of dry ground. He hath no form nor comeliness, and when we shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. He is despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows, uh, and acquainted with grief. And we hid, as it were, our faces from him. He was despised, and we esteemed him not. Surely he hath borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, uh, yet, did, uh, uh, yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions, uh, he was bruised for our iniquities. Uh, the chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. Uh, all we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned every one to his own way. And the Lord hath laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. He is brought as a lamb to the slaughter and as a sheep before shears is dumb. So he opened not his mouth. He was taken from prison and from judgment. And who shall declare his generation? For he was cut off from the land of the living. For his transgression of my people was he stricken. And he, uh, and he made his grave with the wicked and with the rich in his death. Because he had done no violence, neither was any deceit in his mouth. Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. He hath put him to grief. Uh, when thou shalt make his soul an offering for sin, he shall see his se seed. He shall prolong his days, uh, and the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. He shall see the travail of his soul, and shall be satisfied. Uh, by his knowledge shall my righteous servant justify many, for he shall bear their iniquities. Uh, Therefore will I divide him a portion with the great, and he shall divide the spoil with the strong, because he hath poured out his soul unto death. And he was numbered with the transgressors, uh, and he bare the sin of many, and made intercession for the transgressions. Uh, Isaiah chapter number 53 is a prophecy. Isaiah was blessed uh, uh, to get a glimpse and to pin down a prophecy of what our Lord Jesus Christ uh, would experience when he would take on flesh uh, and when he would come and walk among men uh, and when he would come uh, not as the Lion of the tribe of Judah but as the Lamb of God uh, and when he would come uh, and live uh, and breathe and fulfill the law uh, and when he would come and go to the cross of Calvary uh, and pay your sin debt and my sin debt. Uh, I want to get a glimpse of Jesus today. Uh, I want you to notice, first of all, the look of Jesus uh, as we sit here today. And I say that uh, your mind may go back to a painting you've seen uh, of, a, uh, of a, an attractive man with long flowing hair uh, and blue eyes. Uh, uh, friend, I've got news for you. That's not what Jesus looked like. Uh, uh, can I say, first of all, uh, he was a Jew. Jews don't have blue eyes. Uh, 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 he was a Jew. Jews don't have flowing uh, blondish brown hair. Uh, uh, but can I say uh, the Bible gives us uh, 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 an exact uh, uh, description of what he looked like. Uh, uh, look with me in verse number 2. Uh, he said, For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant uh, and as a root out of dry ground. Uh, he hath no form uh, nor comeliness. Uh, and when we shall see him, there is no beauty uh, that we should desire him. Uh, uh, the look of Jesus uh, was not one that the masses would say, what a man. Uh, uh, look at his stature. Uh, look at his strength. Uh, look at his jawline. Uh, look at his beauty. Uh, no, he did not look like that. Uh, uh, friend, he wouldn't have not stuck out in the crowd. Uh, he had no comeliness. Uh, he had no beauty. Uh, and uh, uh, when we were lost in sin uh, and sinners today uh, would not desire him at all. Uh, we see the look of Jesus. Uh, I want you to see the load of Jesus. Uh, look in verse number 3. Uh, he's despised uh, and rejected of men. Uh, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. Uh, and we hid as it were our faces from him. Uh, he was despised uh, and we esteemed him not. Uh, surely he hath borne our griefs uh, and carried our sorrows. Uh, yet, did we, uh, uh, yet we dis did esteem him stricken, uh, smitten of God, uh, 
and afflicted. Can I say, my dear friends, the one who was altogether lovely in the sight of God, the one who loved man more than man knows what love is, the one who could answer every question, the one who knew all that we needed, the one that the world should have been glad that he came. Hey, the world esteemed him stricken. The world despised him. Yet he carried all of that. And he carried our heavy load. He carried our sins. He carried and bore all that we would be guilty of all the way to the cross of Calvary. We see his look. We see his load. But notice his love. Notice the love of Jesus. Look in verse 5. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. With his stripes we are healed. Oh, we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned every one to his own way, and the Lord hath laid on him the iniquity of us all. Do you realize that Jesus, the darling Son of God, Jesus that took dust and formed man of the dust of the earth and breathed in him the breath of life and man became a living soul, Jesus, the one that took nothing and made everything, John chapter number 1 tells us he's the one that made it all. Can I say he flung the stars out on nothing and called them by name? He's the one that placed the sun where it needed to be and the earth in the orbit she needed to be in. He's the one that spun the earth on its axis. He's the one that tells the sun when to shine. He's the one that created all the angelic beings. He's the one that created everything that you see. He's the one that knew to put a plant in the ground and it grow to a tall red oak. He's the one that knows everything. He's omniscient. He's omnipresent. And he's omnipotent. And the darling son of God allowed his creation to beat him beyond recognition. He was beaten. My dear friends, Isaiah 52 said they plucked his beard out. Hey, the Bible says he was marred much more than a man. Didn't even look like a man. He was beaten because he loved you, Melissa. He was beaten because he loved you, Charlie. He was beaten and pierced on Calvary because he loved you. He allowed his love to hang him on a cross. Hey, he took your sin and my sin uh, on himself. Uh, he became every vile thing when man would ever commit uh, because he loved us. Uh, hey, Brother Doug, he loved you. Uh, he loves him St. Lucian people. Uh, hey, he loves everybody. Uh, and he allowed his love to cause him to die. Uh, we see his love. The Lord laid on him the iniquity of us all. He who knew no sin became sin that we might be made the righteousness of God in Him. Notice, if you will, the longing of Jesus. In verse number 10 we find, Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. He hath put him to grief. When thou shalt make his soul an offering for sin, he shall see his seed, he shall prolong his days, and the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. He shall see the travail of his soul and shall be satisfied. By his knowledge shall my righteous servant justify many. He shall bear their iniquities. The longings of Jesus was to fulfill the will of him that sent him. Jesus came to do what you and I can't do. Fulfill the law and satisfy the wrath of God. And when he made his offering for sin, the father looked at it and he was satisfied. He saw his travail and was pleased. The longing of Jesus was to please God. Well, I would to God our longings would be to please God. Amen. Then we see the legacy of Jesus. Look at verse 12. Therefore will I divide him a portion with the great. He is Lord of lords and King of kings, by the way. Mm. And he shall divide the... And with the strong, because he hath poured out his soul unto death, he was numbered with the transgressors, and he bare the sin of many, and was and made intercession for the transgressors. Can I say he started his legacy, and it will be forever rang throughout the portals of glory for all eternity. Worthy is the Lamb to receive honor, riches, power, and glory. 
I got to thinking about all that Jesus is and all that he has done. And I want to steal a title of the old hymn writer, and I want to preach for just a few minutes on, Oh, How I Love Jesus. Amen. Sure. Boy, look at how much he loved me, Brother Clint. I look, Brother James, at all that he's done for me. Oh, how can I not say, oh, how I love him. I love him because he first loved me. 1 John 4, 19 says that, for he first loved us. Oh, when we were lost in sin... When we were wicked and vile and the enemies of God, uh, when we were in enmity with God and we had no idea how to get to God or even that God existed, uh, Jesus loved us. Uh, hey, when we were in the gutters of life, uh, when we offered up nothing but venom and vileness uh, unto God, uh, God still loved us. Uh, hey, I love Him because He first loved me. Uh, hey, Brother Brian, I didn't know how to get to Him, uh, but He came to where I was. Uh, and revealed to me that he loved me. Uh, hey, it's easy, easy to love when you realize what he done for you. Uh, hey, I love him because he first loved me. Uh, hey, it's easy to love somebody uh, uh, who loves you first. Uh, hey, what a blessing uh, uh, that he first loved me. Oh, how I love him. Uh, can I say this? I love him because he forgave me. I stand today not a sinner saved by grace. I stand today saved from the sin that I used to be a part of as a saint of God. He forgave me of my past sins. He forgave me of my present sins. And He forgave me, God forbid, of any future sins that I'll ever commit. When He forgave me, Brother Clint, He wrote me in His righteousness. I've been justified by faith. Hey, when God sees me, He don't see my garment of flesh that fails. He don't see my past. He don't see all my faults. He sees Himself. Hallelujah. When He forgave me, He forgave me gave me, Brother Ray, of every transgression. Uh, he, he cleansed me from all sin. Uh, hey, uh, my sins are not behind his back. They're gone uh, uh, because the blood of Jesus Christ uh, is sufficient uh, and it does wash me from my sin. Uh, thank God he forgave me. His pardon's better than the presidential pardon presidential pardon they still talk about what you're pardoned from yeah. and you talk to God about what he forgave me from he don't know what you're talking about he says justified as if he'd never been a sinner hmm. right. Right. Uh, he sees himself and I find it amazing that when we get to revelation we realize we're going to get a body like his we're going to look like him and can I say, when he looks at me now, he sees himself. When you look at me in heaven, you're going to see him too. Hallelujah. I say glory to God. Uh, oh, how I love Jesus because he first loved me. Because he forgave me. Can I say this? Oh, how I love Jesus because he fellowships with me. Who am I? I mean, I'm nobody. I'm not, I'm not a bump on the... On, on, on the knots of all knotheads of all the logs in the world who am I that God would choose to come and fellowship with me I don't know about you but he'll come and talk with me and sit with me and spend time with me uh, I'm not worthy of that uh, that the darling Lamb of God the King of all kings uh, the Lord of all lords uh, uh, the wonderful beauty of all of heaven uh, He'll come and sit down where I am uh, and talk to me uh, and fellowship with me uh, and telling me that He loves me uh, and that He longs to get to see me as I, uh, I get to see Him as He is and He see me uh, hey what a blessing uh, to have that fellowship with Almighty God. Uh, Amen. Mm. I feel sorry for folks that don't talk to Him very much. One of the precious things you ever have in this life is fellowship with God. I love that song Miss Marcia singing every now and then. Walks with me and talks with me and tells me I'm one of His own. Thank God for them in the garden experiences. 
we just get to fellowship with God. I like fellowshipping with some of y'all. Not all of you. Some of you get on my nerves. But I like fellowshipping with some of you. But can I say this? I love fellowshipping with him. Huh. I can read that Song of Solomon and read about that Shunammite lady she's describing Solomon and look at the parallel and I can say he is altogether lovely. He is the fairest of 10,000 of my soul. Are you listening? Oh, those special times when he comes by and just leaves a little scent of himself. Let you know he's been there. Are you listening? Oh, those times when you're down and out and he comes by and just picks you up. Huh? Well, I love him because he fellowships with me. Mm -mm. I love him because he forgave me. I love him because he first loved me. I love him because he furnishes me. Uh, there's an old song written one time, Every Need Supply. i got to say amen to that. Amen. He's never, ever not met every need I've ever had. He furnishes me. And can I say he furnishes me not just with what I need. He gives me a lot of my want, but can I say I am faring far better than I ever sowed. Are you listening? Uh, he has blessed me with a wonderful family, a wonderful wife. He has blessed me uh, uh, with a wonderful home, wonderful clothes, wonderful vehicles to drive, a wonderful church to come for, to, uh, a, a wonderful Christian family. I mean, God has furnished everything I'd ever need in this life. Hmm? Amen. Uh, I love him. He's furnished. I mean, how could you not love a God that just takes good care of you? Hmm? He's been taking good care of me. Huh? Uh, 45 years and he's still taking good care of me. Well, it's hard to believe I've been with him longer than them Jews in the wilderness. But can I say this? He's taking good care of me. Amen. He's sustained there where their shoes and their clothes didn't wear out. He just keeps giving me new shoes and new clothes. I mean, he's been good to me, huh? I love him because he furnishes me. Can I say this? I love him because he's never failed me. Amen. I know... You all love me and my wife and my family. You take so good care of me. And I know some of you think I walk on water. Just hang around me long enough. You're going to find out that's not true. Time goes on long enough. I'm going to fail you. I'm going to let you down. I'm going to disappoint you. But Jesus never will. I don't want to disappoint you. But I know one who never will. It won't even enter into your thought that he'll disappoint you. When everybody else is walking out, he'll walk in. When everybody else lets you down, he'll be right there to pick up the pieces. Are you listening? He'll never fail you. Oh, you may not get everything you desire out of life, but you'll get everything that is best for you out of life. And he will never fail you. Never disappoint you. Never let you down. Never leave you wondering... If he's there. And can I say this? Oh, how I love Jesus. Because he secured a future for me. I mean, as good as he is to me right now, the Bible says this is just the earnest of the Spirit. This is just the down paper. This is just the upfront money. This is just the first step. Friend, wait till you see what he's got for me over there. The future he has secured for me. Amen. I get to be with him Amen. forever. Huh? Where there is no more sickness, no more sorrow. Huh? No more tears, no more heartaches, no more funerals, no more uh, 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 separation, no more. It's going to be wonderful and blessed and glorious forevermore. Huh? Oh, what a future he has secured for me. And some of you got your future in the stock market. I hope. Trump stays in office and that you keep getting the good results there. But sooner or later, that thing's going to end. Hmm? Some of you got your future in, in your properties and, and your lands. That's a real blessing. I hope uh, Duke don't need to come take it from you to build a road or something. But sooner or later, that's going to end. You know, I do help out at the funeral home. I've done quite a few funerals in the last year and a half. Can I say I've never seen a hearse follow, you know, followed by a U-Haul truck? You know what I have seen a lot of? Things people spend a lifetime accumulating. When they check out of here, their families fight over it. 
See a lot of that. See a lot of families don't even talk to one another because uh, one of them wants mama's coffee table. See a lot of them fussing and fighting because they wanted daddy's whatever. Spent a whole lifetime trying to leave your family something for only for them to fuss and fight over and never talk with them one another again. Hmm? I've seen a lot of people think they're going to live forever. You are. Just not here on this earth. Amen. And they spend all their time trying to make this earth lifestyle so comfortable for them they don't think about eternity. It's okay to have things here. Just don't let things get in the way of what he's got going on up there. Amen. The Bible says, store up your treasures in heaven where the rust don't corrupt, moth don't eat. Amen. Mm. I love him because of the future he secured for me. Everything's already okay in glory. He blesses me here so I can tell others how good he is. So maybe they'll trust in him too and get to go with me when I go over there. Amen. Well, I've got more, but I think we just need to shut her down right here. Listen to me. Isaiah 53 tells us of all the pain that Jesus went through so you wouldn't have to face the pain of eternity. Friend, Jesus took your hell so you wouldn't have to die and go to hell. Jesus loved you so much he was willing to do that so you could go to heaven when you died. Jesus came not to build a kingdom but to seek and to save that which was lost. He's still, Brother Ray, seeking to save that which was lost. If you're here today and you're not saved, Jesus loves you and allowed you to be here today because he wants you to know that he loves you, that he died for you, and that you don't have to die and go to hell. He paid your price on Calvary, was buried and rose again according to the scripture that he might give you eternal life. All he asks in return is that you be willing to humble yourself and ask him to save you. The Bible says... Jesus saith unto them, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Amen. If all you can hold to is that you go to church, that you get money in the plate, that you've been baptized, that you shook a preacher's hand, friend, you're not going to make it. You've got to get to Jesus yes. and ask him to save you. I wonder today, do you love Jesus? Have you ever come to the point where you ask Him to save you? Have you ever seen how much He really loved you? That He died for you? And that He'll save you? Now some people don't get saved because they don't feel that they're worthy. They don't think God can save them. i got good news for you. He died for you. And He can save you. The only thing keeping you from being saved is you. The price has been paid. But you've got to humble yourself and ask Him to save you. And if you'll do that, He'll save you. You can't go to heaven based on what your mom and dad did, or your grandma or grandpa, or your brother, your sister, your wife, your husband. You can only go to heaven based on what you do with Jesus. And if you're willing to give your heart to Him. Friend, He is so easy to love when you realize how much He loved you. And today... He does love you. I know what the devil do. The devil say, oh, you, you, you're sorry, and the devil make you feel like nobody could love you. I got good news for you. Jesus loved you with an everlasting love. You don't have to be good enough for Jesus. He loves you just as you are. And today, he wants to save you. If you're here today and you're saved, let me ask you this. How much do you love him? Do you love him enough to live for him? Do you love him enough to do whatever he asks of you? Hmm. Amen. You say, why well, is Brother Doug going down to St. Lucia so he can get some glory? No, Brother Doug's going to St. Lucia because Brother Doug made a promise to God that if God opened the door, he'd go through it. 
He's got too much going on to go to St. Lucia. But he's going there because he's got a burden for those people and God opened the door. Now God may never call you to go somewhere like that, but God may call you to go across the street and tell your neighbor that Jesus loves them. God just may ask you to be a little more faithful to him in the things of God. How much do you love him? See, when you love somebody, you'll sacrifice whatever it takes to help them. When you love Jesus right, you'll put yourself aside to do whatever good Jesus wants of you. How much do you love him? You willing to get out of your comfort zone and just do whatever he'd ask you to do? I found this out, Brother Ray. Anytime he's ever asked me to do something, even when I was a little anxious about it, once I made that commitment to do it, he'd always help me. Whatever I was anxious about usually ended up being nothing. He always gave me the strength to do what he'd have me to do. He just waited on me to be committed to do it. I wonder this morning, do you love Jesus? How much do you love him? I'm like, Look at all he's done for you. Why wouldn't you want to love him back? Hmm. If you're here today and you're not saved, we'll take a Bible and show you how to be saved if you'll come today. Be the best day of your life. Don't let anything hinder you from getting to Jesus today. He's here. Oh, His presence is so wonderful and so real. All He asks for you to do is to call on Him. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. You can be saved today, friend. Will you come and give your heart and life to Jesus? Let's all stand, Brother Ray. You come get a song of invitation. While they're coming, let's pray. Father, we do not have words in our vocabulary to describe how wonderful you are, how gracious you are, and truly how much we love you. Lord, we want to thank you for first loving us and thank you for all you did that we might be saved. Lord, even though we get the depictions from Scripture, we cannot truly fully comprehend the pain, the agony, and all you endured on the cross that we might have eternal life. God, thank you for doing that for us. And thank you for loving us. Now, God, as I stand here, I fear in my heart there are folks here today who are not saved. God, I pray you'd speak to their hearts and through those cords of love that you have loved us with throughout the ages. You would draw them to yourself and we'd see them saved by the good grace of God. God, I pray for every child of God, they'd get a fresh glimpse of how much you love them. And Lord, they'd turn and love you back the way you deserve to be loved. Bless this invitation now. Speak to hearts. Help folks to come. Give their heart and life to Jesus. We'll thank you for what you do. In Jesus' name we pray. If you enjoyed today's message, head on over to ibcflorence.com and click on sermons. And don't forget to check out our other links in the notes section of today's broadcast. As always, thanks for listening.